Calling Dandadan Dan weird is like calling the sky blue or the sun hot. These are each true statements, but they also fail to fully grasp the whole picture. This is a violent, lighthearted, intense, goofy, heartbreaking manga that really defies any attempt to categorize it. Can you sum it up in a word? No. A sound? Dan to Dan's premise is incredibly simple. What if every legend on those weird reality TV History Channel shows were true? Aliens and the paranormal are both real and out to kill our main characters, high schoolers Momo and Ken. One arc, for example, will see the main cast fighting the Loch Ness Monster, and also an alien crab that boxes and quotes ABBA. His blood is milk, don't worry about it. Dan to Dan is weird but it has a lot more going on for it than just a strange premise and an oddball cast. After Chainsaw Man Part 1's ending left a pretty big hole in my heart, Dan to Dan stepped in and has been helping to fill it. These two series share a lot more in common than you might expect, so if you like one, you might like the other just as much. The Chainsaw Man comparisons haunting this manga are there for a reason. The series really feels like a companion piece to the international sensation, and that's in large part due to the author's background. Dan to Dan is created by Yukinobu Tatsu and released for free on Shonen Jump Plus. Jump Plus, also known as Manga Plus internationally, is a digital version of Weekly Shonen Jump that acts as a sort of testing ground for manga that might be too strange or explicit to include alongside series like One Piece or My Hero Academia. Before creating Dan to Dan, Yukinobu worked as Chainsaw Man creator Tatsuki Fujimoto's assistant on the manga Fire Punch, another Jump Plus title that is incredibly disturbing. If you know, you know. Fire Punch had a shocking number of talented creators working on it as assistants, including the future authors of Hell's Paradise and Spy Family. That's huge. And if Dan to Dan follows the pattern set by Fujimoto's other assistants, that would mean an anime adaptation has to be coming somewhere down the line. And that adaptation will probably do pretty well. Maybe not Spy Family well, but hopefully big enough to bring this manga to more people. I selfishly want this series to succeed because I want more titles like it. So I'm going to try and convince you why I think Dan to Dan is worth your time. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Dan to Dan's art is gorgeous. Now, I'm not an artist. I can't speak on specific techniques or shading or even layouts from a position of much knowledge. I'm way more of a story themes and tone kind of person, and we'll get to all that in just a minute. But first, just take in these spreads. Let them wash over you. Look at these monster designs that would feel at home in one of those Junji Ito collections. Look at these wacky characters doing silly things. Now look at their designs under a different light. See how those same designs transform to fit a scene with a completely different tone. Now watch them do it again, and again, and again. This manga's art rules, and more importantly, it's versatile. It can squish and stretch and adapt to fit what the story demands. Sometimes that's gritty and realistic, and other times it's wacky and borderline slapstick. Occasionally, the story is both, leading to certain spreads that are so bizarre that when you flip to them, you don't know whether to laugh, get scared, or both. It's a brilliant trick, and one that I've only seen done well in one other manga. I wonder which one that could be. More importantly than being nice to look at, Dan to Dan's art is also effectively organized. I've read my fair share of manga with messy battle sequences. Sometimes, who is fighting who and how characters are supposed to be moving across panels gets hard to comprehend in a medium with only two primary colors to work with. Even otherwise great manga struggle to keep their fights clean, and while Dan to Dan is more than just a battle manga, it excels at being one when it needs to. Characters have impact. They leap across panels and sometimes burst through them with explosive force. Even when the fights in the series get as eccentric as the rest of the manga, they remain easy to follow and exciting to read. And when the story needs to, it pulls back into dialogue-free, double-page spreads that make you sit with the series for an extra few seconds while you're picking your jaw up off the floor. When it comes to Dan to Dan's art, you're never quite sure what you're getting next. Intense scenes will turn comedic, and the funniest scenes can get serious fast, sometimes with just a quick page flip. 
The art is almost erratic, but that's exactly what a series with this sort of premise needs. And yeah, what exactly is that premise? Well, the Air Force One where they found all that stuff. I'm flying in the plane. I'm always hallucinating, but who really knows what I'm looking at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's the pitch. Two high schoolers, Momo and Ken, make a bet with each other. Momo believes in spirits and bets Ken they exist. Ken believes in aliens and bets Momo they are real. Unfortunately, they're both right. The world is full of dangerous spirits and is also constantly being invaded by aliens. Both groups steal something precious from Ken. Specifically, they steal his, um... They steal his, uh... Yeah, you know. We gotta take your balls away. Yeah. Look, I'm not above a good dick and balls joke, but a shocking amount of this series' plot is centered around Ken trying to steal back his family jewels from various ghosts and aliens. Seriously, one of both of his balls have been missing for over a hundred chapters. That's gotta cause some complications, and it's a major plot point of the whole series. Calling Dan to Dan an elaborate shitpost is not inaccurate, but it's got a lot more going on for it than just its elevator pitch. Are you starting to understand why I can't stop comparing it to Chainsaw Man? Or do I have to show that one dingy panel? Both series have these juvenile setups, and Dan to Dan's in particular feels more at home in a gag comedy manga and not an action series. But as we've already mentioned, its art allows it to excel at being both. And the manga even manages to pull off moments here and there that feel genuinely heartfelt. The average reader may never get to these moments, but I promise you they are there, buried behind layers of absurdity. So yeah, as much as I'm praising Dan to Dan, Tatsuki Fujimoto is the most exciting mangaka I'm familiar with working right now. His stories are absurd, sometimes gross, sometimes borderline offensive, but they are always earnest. His writing, and in particular his character writing, manages to tap into universally understood emotions that shine through his often unconventional subject matter. Loneliness, guilt, love, envy, grief, it's all there, bringing larger-than-life characters down to earth in a single page or panel, and then making you laugh out loud in the next one. Yukinobu Tatsu isn't quite operating on the same level as his previous sensei, but he's getting better and better. Dan to Dan and Chainsaw Man both remind me why I first got into anime and manga, and why I've also stayed a fan for over a decade. Watching, reading, and talking about anime and manga are a big part of my life, and what I like about both mediums is pretty much the same thing. No matter how much anime I watch or manga I read, I usually can't predict how a series will play out from episode to episode, or chapter to chapter. They are just too unpredictable. Or if you want to be a jerk about it, too strange. Some of that strangeness is certainly cultural. I don't always understand the historical or artistic influences a Japanese story draws on because I'm not Japanese. I wasn't raised on the same media as a lot of the people making this art, and as a result, anime and manga are always going to have a certain quirkiness, from my perspective, that I really enjoy. I'm not always in on the joke, but I can still laugh. For example, one of Dan Dan's longest running gags references a real life famous Japanese actor I'm completely unfamiliar with. I find these lost in translation moments weirdly endearing, but they aren't the main draw for watching anime and manga for me. Just a nice bonus. I watch and like a lot of Japanese media because I never quite know where these stories are headed, which is a feeling I don't really get from a lot of Western created stories. I know what a Spider Man story looks like, or a spy thriller. Or slasher. I have a pretty good handle on the modern and postmodern sensibilities that make up most of what comes out of Hollywood. I understand their references, I'm in on the same jokes. It takes a really special project to catch me off guard, and I count myself lucky if I get one or two of those a year. The sad truth of it is, the projects that generate enough investor money to make it into a movie theater or get a season or two on Netflix typically have to check a lot of boxes that all lead to the same goal. Mass appeal. Anime doesn't have mass appeal, at least not in the same way. And Dan to Dan certainly doesn't. It's not for everyone. It's goofy. It's needlessly complicated. It's sometimes pretty stupid, often hilarious, occasionally touching, and always, always, always strange. 
If you're into that flavor of weird, you'll probably be into this series, but maybe you won't. I wasn't, at least at first. I found the characters annoying and the plot overly random, but eventually, I started to feel like there was something really special happening with this series. The more chapters I read, the more this feeling grew. Before long, I started to really enjoy this series' weird rhythm. Every beat in this story seems to be leading to a new gag, a new fight, a new cast member, or sometimes all three. Arcs vary wildly in subject matter and stakes. Some of my favorite examples include an arc that stretches a traditional haunted house storyline to its absolute breaking point, and a different storyline involving a fight with an acrobatic spirit that really evolves into a surprisingly effective tearjerker. Seriously, this story is less than 20 chapters into the manga and is absolutely devastating. If you end up giving this manga a try, at least make it to this panel. You'll be glad you did. Dandadan Dan has this neat way of framing its ever-expanding story by often returning its characters to the same dinner table. After most major arcs, the core cast always shares a meal. These breather chapters are a chance for enemies to become friends and friends' family. They're some of my favorite panels in the series, and to me, they're a perfect example of Yukinobo's willingness to take his most out-there ideas and characters and make them feel human. And without spoiling too much, he's really good at doing this in a lot of unexpected moments. It's endearing and neat, and I wish more manga could be like it. This manga has a real empathetic eye for oddballs, and I think that's something worth celebrating. Also, at least in the US, the whole series can be read once for free using the Manga Plus app. This video isn't an ad for this service. No one paid me to talk about it or anything like that. I just like telling people about it because I think it's neat. If you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing or watching another video. I have a few different ones covering manga that you might enjoy. Either way, thank you for watching until the end. We'll talk again soon.